Lord Jesus, you're above all else. There's none like you, none compares to you. You alone possess immortality. and You dwell in unapproachable light and yet you've made a way. You are the way, the truth and the life. We have access to the Father because of your great love for us. Because you laid down your life. You emptied yourself. You made yourself of no reputation that we might come to know you, might receive the love of God into our hearts, be born of the Spirit, be born of God, be born again out of darkness into light because of your great faithfulness and love for us. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So any good news, isn't it? I'm going to talk... Oh, this is going to surprise you. I'm going to talk about the Lord that healeth. I am the Lord that healeth thee. It's Old Covenant, Old Testament. God was a healer way back in the Old Testament as well as the New. <clears throat> so if you've got your Bibles or your iPads or your iPhones or your Android or your whatever else there is, we can be secret Christians when we've got those things. We don't have to carry a Bible. Turn uh, to Exodus chapter 15. <clears throat> You did it. Because I just got lectured by Charles on how to do it. And then it went off and I thought maybe I'd done something. Pardon? Exodus 15, and we'll read from verse 22. Through to... Pardon? No, Exodus. But it's sort of like around that area. 20, uh, 15, verse 22. And then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea... And they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days into the wilderness and found no water. This is just at the beginning, after the exodus, they'd left Egypt, and it's early days. And when they came to Marah, they could not drink the waters of Marah, for they were bitter, therefore it was named Marah, because it was bitter. It's funny, isn't it? It's Marah, it's called Marah because it's bitter. So the people grumbled, and Moses said, What shall we drink? Then he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, and he threw it into the waters, and the waters became sweet. Gee, God cares, doesn't he? About everything, everything, all the time. And they became sweet, and there he made for them a statute and a regulation, and there he tested them. And he said, If you give earnest heed to the voice of the Lord your God, and do what is right in his sight, and give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, whew, that sounds like hard work to me. I will put none of these diseases on you which I have put on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am Jehovah Rapha is the actual uh, Hebrew word, <clears throat> Lord. Lord is Jehovah. Rapha is uh, not so much what he is, or it's not so much what he does, it's what he is. He is the Lord that heals us. There's a, a few covenant names. There's, uh, there's Jehovah. When you hear the word Jehovah, it's God in covenant relationship with us. When you hear the word God, that's God in Elohim, who is God to everybody. He's God whether, they, whether it's believed or not. But Jehovah is like the relationship between you and God. And This is back in the Old Covenant. And so Jehovah is his name, Lord, in covenant with you. And one of his names is Jehovah Sidkenu, which is God my righteousness. Another is uh, Jehovah Shammah, which is uh, God with us. These were all fulfilled in Jesus, weren't they? God with us, the hope of glory. Um, uh, Jehovah uh, Shalom, God my peace. Jesus said, I am your peace. So here's one of the names of God. One of the covenant names of God is Jehovah Rapha. And that's in that verse 26, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. There's a verse... In Malachi, which says, I am the Lord, I change not. What he was then, he is today. What he did then, he does today. I am the Lord, I change not. So he's the healer then, he is the healer today. And that's good news. And if you know God, if he's living in your heart, you have the healer inside of you. He lives there because you invited him in. But of course we've got this instruction on how to get that stuff, you know, like if you will give earnest heed and diligently. So we go, goodness sake, how do I do that? <clears throat> but there's some real good news here. Because Jesus did that for us. It's quite simple. 
He's the one who obeyed all the law. Didn't sin. Because if we decide we want to obey all the law, uh, James 2.10 says, if you obey all the law and miss on one point, you are guilty of all. So there's no way that we can possibly uh, pursue and obtain and be in a place of fulfilling the law ourselves. Because we don't even know them all, do we? How many here know just ten commandments? Who could quote them? I used to be able to. Hey. Yeah. If, you know, diligently seeking and all that. But see, when, when we come to Jesus, he's done that for us. We are in him now. And he is in us. And what he's accomplished for us is that he fulfilled the law. He didn't come to destroy the law because the law is holy, good and perfect. But it can't make anyone holy, good and perfect because it's something that we do. And we can't... And I tell you, if you have a really good day, you do nothing wrong, you fulfil all the law that you know and you do nothing wrong, tomorrow you've got to do it again. You can't do it. The law was given that we might know we can't do it. The Holy Scriptures in Romans about that. And uh, if we can't do it, we have to, by faith, trust the one who did do it. And his name is Jesus. He became sin for you, that you might become righteous in him. Got our righteousness. It's good stuff, isn't it? We know he's the healer. I'm speaking to believers, and we believe because we're believers. Now, we know it, but we don't know it. We think it, but we don't think it. We always find reasons for us not being healed. Don't we? Hmm? If thou shalt. It's a bit like Deuteronomy 28, where you've got the blessings and the curses. And it starts very similar. It says, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken, lead, hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God. Whew. More work. And observe and do all his commandments. You know, ten commandments are only ten commandments. How many are there, Richard? There's 300 and something in there. Commandments? There's that many. Who cares? <laughs> Honestly, what we do, we get born again, and his righteousness is reckoned to us. We become as he is. Our lives change and become a new creation. I'm a new creation. And then we get older in this Christian thing, we forget that stuff. So we, we, start, we start saying, well, I've got to do this and I've got to do that. And if I don't do this, and I, it's just, man, we just get so mixed up as we get older. We get to know more and we lose what, what got us to the place of receiving Christ. I was talking to my son last night. My son's a muso. He's a... Absolutely brilliant mind. Very, very intelligent. He's talking himself out of the gospel. Keeps, keeps having excuses. Very, very intelligent conversations and arguments against what Jesus has done. Because he, you know, he's been universalised with the universities. and <clears throat> It's very sad. But I love him with all my heart. That's where, why Julie was late today, saying goodbye to him. And uh, we've had a wonderful time just sharing with him yesterday, last night, uh, all, all the time. And, and I find sometimes we, we, have, we talk for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. And sometimes it's up, and, up, and, up, and uh, but I find that the gospel, the most good is, uh, occurs when I, I sort of just quiet down, talk very slowly, and the room goes quiet, and we start saying the good things about Jesus. And, it, and then the volume will go up again because, you know, <laughs> cause he's feisty, so am I. <laughs> Good. Now, I have no idea what I said about Joseph. I was going somewhere with that thought. As I'm talking, I'm thinking, what was I going to say? <clears throat> yes. Reason. Yeah, no, that's, thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Um, because uh, that's what Joseph does. We love him with all our heart, but he got so, cause they, he's just so full of knowledge of all sorts of things. He's very worldly, very knowledgeable, musician, brilliant musician, just uh, come back from Paris in January and had to write a piece for, uh, for 16 different instruments. He had two weeks to do it at uh, some thing in Adelaide. We weren't able to see it. It was fantastic. But um, just very, very smart. You don't have to be smart to be a Christian. 
Thank you, Jesus. What you have to have is faith in him, the one who did it for us. Have faith in him as our saviour, as our healer, as our deliverer. Translates us out of darkness into light. We don't have to live in darkness anymore. He is so good to us. And it's our faith in what he's done that gives us access to the grace which he's provided. And grace is not what we deserve, it's what he did for us. And mercy is the withholding of that which we do deserve. Not by works of righteousness that we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration, born again, and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. It's always what he's done. And here we have this thing about diligently, hearkening diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God. Man, I tell you, there's so many voices we have to decide what to listen to and we must always go back to this book. Last night I was talking with Joseph and uh, I couldn't remember something. I said, I'd love to go to the book. He said, no, I don't go to that book. I said, but it's the only book that I go to. Because, hey, in there it says, let God be true and every man a liar. Anyone told a lie? Anyone? Nobody? I think, so you're lying now. You haven't told a lie. <laughs> liar. Except for Kev, he's not a liar because he told us he lied. Once, only once, one to Kev. Twice! Twice. <laughs> Where's the lie? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> there's another verse I wanted to go to. What was it? He, without faith, faith in what, that he has done this for you, you can't have this thing. You, you, see, all the promises of God are yes and amen in him, but they're all voice activated. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. I will say that. If we just think it, oh, it's hard. But if we say it, something happens. Because death and life are in the power of our tongue when we speak forth the words of God. There's power in those words. The word of God has the power within it to perform what it says. See, it's the word. When you got born again, you got born of the word. The word came to you. Somebody didn't come up and say, no, no, I said, if you receive Christ, you can get born again and pass out of death into life, out of darkness into light. Your life can be transformed. You can be born again. You can be made just like God here on the earth if you'll receive what he did for you. As many as receive him to them gave he the right to become the sons of God, the children of God. Children of God. That song, that song no longer says, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. He's my father. I'm his son. He loves me. He's got my photo in his wallet. Hi, Steve. Our photo's on his mantelpiece. Oh, there's the Franklin family. Couple missing there. We'll get them later. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is. We must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So the diligently seeking does not mean obeying all the law and commandments. It really is by faithfully and diligently seeking after Jesus. Seek after him. Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. One of Julie's favourite scriptures. She used it last night talking to each other. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. I remember 20 years ago, she, in Bardia's and she got the revelation of that. Wow, she started preaching to me. He's up. I don't preach to me. <laughs> Joseph said last night, there's a, I get into preach mode, right? and there's this mode come. Well, I'm ready to go there all the time. Night or day, I'm ready. If, if the words come or something happens in a situation, we're ready to go. Preach. And preach is just communicating the gospel. What you know about Jesus. It's good, isn't it? Diligently seek Jesus, not seeking to obey the laws. When you seek him, you're empowered by him, by his grace and his mercy, and by the fact that you're totally and absolutely forgiven, to, to do works under righteousness. We're created unto good works once we're born again. Good works won't do us any good until we're born again. Then they become like that, where the rewards come from. But. So we must trust Jesus. So when you read an old... Testament scripture an old co- of the old covenant which is a lesser covenant than the new it's actually obsolete as far as a means of obtaining right standing with God because there's only one way now and he's, he 
He's got a name. His name is Jesus. The way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father but by him. Jesus, uh, Joseph was asking last night, what is truth? Person. <sighs> oh, yeah, person. <laughs> but no, no, he said, well, if you know, someone robs the bank and says, I did it, that's true. So that's not Jesus. I was, well, that's, yeah, you're right. I said, Jesus is truth. If you know truth, you, you know Jesus. And if you know Jesus, you know truth. But <clears throat> there's a whole heap of things out there, words... And words are baffling people all around. We've just got to stick to the truth, which is the man, Christ Jesus. Anyway, that's point one. If you diligently seek him not to obey, you will then obey because you've sought him. He's empowered you to be what you already are. Does that make sense? <clears throat> okay, so we've got the next point in that verse. If you sit, diligently seek him, we've that earnest head, we've spoken about that. It says, I will put none of these diseases on you which I put upon Egypt. Do you know why he doesn't put diseases upon us? Anyone know? Because he put them on Jesus. All the sickness and all the disease and the work of the cross was placed on Jesus. What's that great movie, uh, The Passion of the Christ? People went to it, people wept and left the theatre thinking, wow, how horrible was that? And yet that didn't even touch slightly what actually happened to Jesus. He was beaten like that, but he was made to be sin and he was made sick with our sicknesses. And the scripture says he was hardly recognisable as a human being. He was just like, meat, <coughs> beaten. And then the father grieved Jesus, but it didn't grieve the Father. It pleased the Father to make him sick with our sicknesses. He doesn't put them on us. He put them, past tense, on Jesus. Now, any sickness that comes knocking on our door, doctor said, doctor says some things to me, I, I don't answer, I say no. That's the men I've won every battle, but I'm going to. <clears throat> We've got to be careful what we say. Well, I'm not even talking about that, am I, really? I'll put none of these diseases. He put them on Jesus. He was made sin with our sin, sick with our sicknesses. Isaiah 53, 4 says, Surely he hath borne our griefs, which is sickness and disease, and carried our sorrows, which is pains. But we, esteemed, uh, but we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. So he was made sick with our sicknesses. He was made sin with our sin. Matthew 8.16 is a New Testament commentary on that verse 53.4 in Isaiah. When evening was come, they brought to Jesus many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with the word and healed all who were ill. Why? Next verse. To fulfil that which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying himself took our infirmities and carried away our diseases. He bore in his own body on that tree our sin. Who his own self bore our sin in his own body on the tree. That we being dead to sin should live under righteousness by whose stripes we were healed. By his stripes we were healed. That's the blessing of God. That's the word of God. Every sickness that comes, by his stripes I'm healed. I resist you. We resist sin, yeah? Well, I hope so. We do, don't we? Well, same, we must resist sickness. And it's only for our benefit. Because he is the Lord that heals us. And if Jesus has fulfilled the law, we don't have to be diligently hearkening unto the voice of every single law, rule, regulation. The government's given us more regulations every day. What we've got to do and what we can't do. What you can say, what you can't say. <coughs> Freedom of speech is fast disappearing in this country at a million miles an hour. Don't you dare talk against anything that's ungodly because it might hurt someone. It's weird, isn't it? We live in a weird country where good's called bad and bad's called good. It's weird. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's the powers of darkness. That's the enemy just coming in, trying to cause you to be confused and not know that God is true. His word's true, it always has been. 
His word is true in the beginning and every one of his righteous judgments every one of his righteous judgments endures forever. Everything he's ever said endures forever. Talking again last night about this book, you know, that book, you could chuck that book in the fire, but the words won't burn. The, the book will, because it's only a paper from the APM, wherever it's from. It's only wood and chemicals rolled together and cooked or whatever. And, uh, so it's just a book, but the words are eternal. The words within that book, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. doesn't mean the Bible won't, or that particular, that one there, the words. So what he said is eternal. And Jesus himself is the word. He was the word made flesh. He, he's the living word. He's the word made flesh. And now we're the word made flesh. The word in us is working out of us as we minister through our mouth. And by faith minister the word of God like to everyone who's sick. Anyone who's sick. By his stripes you're healed doesn't matter if they're Christian or not. You guys have, down the street, they get healings to non-Christians because they haven't been mixed up, getting saved wonderfully and then forgetting all the good stuff and get back into laws and I've got to do this and I've got to do that and I didn't do this and that. Hey, none of that stuff's valid. I mean, the devil will make you think that you're not good enough. Well, you're not. Anyone here good enough? No. Is Jesus good enough? You're in him. He's in you. <laughs> He's in you. Man, oh man, oh man. Okay, and I'll get to the end here. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. I'll read through it again. If you would give earnest heed to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight and give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have put on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who healeth thee. It's who he is. And because of who he is, he does what he does. All sickness and all disease was placed on Jesus on that cross 2,000 years ago. And that's the truth. I drove past the hospital with Julia day. I said, look at the size of that building out the back that they have, they've had to build because of sickness. It's just gigantic. It's Double story, triple story, whatever it is, I guess. It's a lot of money. You wouldn't, be, wouldn't you be able to feel, feed a few orphans with the money that we have to spend? Now, I'm not, I'm not trying to have a go, at, I'm not having a go at people not in any way. But that's the situation. Because people believe that sickness is supreme. When in actual fact, Jesus is supreme. He's Lord and He's King. His word is true, always has been. Forever, O Lord. Your word is settled in heaven forever. What he said yesterday, he says today. I am the Lord, I change not. So we've just got to fight and refuse. Stand firm because, it is, I mean, we're constantly, constantly we, we have our minds flooded with words which cause unbelief to come. The moment you turn the idiot box on, I did just call an idiot box and then spend hours in front of it and complain about it. Back in the 80s, I remember sitting there. Oh, that's, well, it's the same today, except we've got more channels. But it's the same. You can flick through that thing. You can flick through that 100 and 376, whatever it is, channels, and there'll be nothing of any benefit unless you accidentally come somewhere where someone actually says something true. Creflo Dollar. Yes. Who else? There's others. Yeah, you know, like there's other good preachers, aren't there? Uh, Brian, um, Brian, Brian Houston. What an amazing man of God. What a just sensational people. Phil Pringle. Ooh, my favourite. My favourite Aussie preacher. Yeah, there's, there's good stuff on TV, but you've got to go up early Sunday morning for it, I think. And we don't always get up in time to watch it. But we are constantly bombarded with words which aren't true they're not the word of God so God's true, man's not and we're constantly bombarded with it 
And the fight of faith is not so much against fear, though fear is the mother of, you know, fear of death is the mother of all fears and fear is bad, but the fight is between believing and unbelief. And the unbelief comes at you constantly from sources. You know, they had the radio on at work all the time. And they go, I turned off. Because <laughs> they talk absolute tripe and you can try and not listen, but you are hearing this stuff. And they've got that dingbat, that Kyle, on the local channel. I think it's 24-7. And he's putrid. His mouth is putrid. He is putrid. And if we sit and listen to it, we get that putrid unbelief preventing faith. There's two horses and in the middle is you. And you've got unbelief pulling that way and you've got belief pulling that way. And whoever's the stronger will win. By his stripes I am... No, because you didn't go to church. No, because... Now, he's stronger. I'm strong in the Lord and the power of his... Oh, no, you're not because you didn't help Julie mow the lawn. Or whatever. So the, the, the fight, the problem is believing and not believing. Unbelief comes at you every day. So you've got to fight it. You've got to speak to it. When the thought comes, you've got to say, nope. When the word comes, nope, I'm not having it. You've got to keep saying it. You say, no, 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 until either the thought goes or you win. You win anyway if you keep on. We only lose if we stop fighting the fight of faith. So this unbelief thing, it's, that's the problem. Whatever's the strongest, we'll win. We don't need a grain. Faith is the seed of mustard. Like we're Faith size of a mustard seed. That's all you need. And you'll save this sycamore tree. Be there, taken up and cast in the sea and it will go. That's all we need. So it's not the amount of faith, it's the quality of faith. And unbelief taints faith. It causes it to be null and void. It, it takes away and it comes at you all the time. So that's why we have to be diligent. Be strong in the Lord. Fight the fight of faith. Every tongue that's raised against you in judgment, you must condemn it. You must condemn it. Otherwise it will just keep, keep on at you. So, you know, we, we make a decision whether to win or lose. The book says we win, but we have to attach ourselves to that book. That's got to be the most important document in your life. More important than anything is that book. And what you know about it. And then find out more about it. You can read it. I've been reading it for a long time. I've been born again on 1979. That's 38 years ago, and I've been reading it almost every day. I try and read it every day. I try and read it a couple of hours if I can. If Julie's not home, I can. She's home, I feel good. I better go and help her do something. Nah. <laughs> See, the Word of God is just the most wonderful thing. Because it's in there. Without that book, you wouldn't have got saved. You'd be on your way to hell. Not because you're any worse than anybody else, but because you didn't believe in Jesus. And you disregard Jesus, a lot of nice people are going to go to hell. A lot of people not so nice are going to be in heaven. Because they've trusted Jesus. Not what they did, but what he did. So... Here's the deal. I am the Lord that healeth thee. If you will hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God in regard to him becoming sin for you and sick for you. Jesus healed all those who came to him. No exceptions. No exceptions. I've told you this before. There are 17 times in the New Testament we're healed one, two or, two or more people. 17 times, and there's 47 times that he healed one person. So it's 64 times in four books we see Jesus healing. I can remember when I first got saved how, the, how, uh, how there was a, there's a, there's a, there's a scripture about um, faith, the just shall live by faith, four times in scripture. And I remember some people that it's so important God's told us four times. It's very, very important. It is. Four times. Well, here's 64 times in four books that we see Jesus healing. That's very important, especially today. Because there's more people, there's more sickness. There's more doctors, there's more hospitals. The hospitals are getting bigger and bigger. 
And there's nothing wrong with hospitals. If we didn't have them, there'd be more people dying. A lot of Christians too. So we've just got to, you know, to believe, we make a decision to believe. I'm going to believe that. I'm going to fight until I win. I'm going to fight this thing that the doctor said is incurable. I'm going to fight it until I win or die. Doesn't matter if you die, you go straight to be with him. We win. Doesn't matter. Is that right? We, that's right. If we, but you fight. There's a man there called Richard. Man fought, fought a couple of really big battles in the last 20 years and won because he believed God. He won. Life-threatening. He won. How? By knowing what Jesus had done for him and knowing that God is the Lord to heal us. If you haven't got that understanding, you cannot believe. If you don't know it, you can't show it. <clears throat> so it's just a matter of belief. Jesus put it this way, believe, only believe. If we believe and doubt not. Um, Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be there taken up, and be there cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. So you say things, but just don't doubt. So the doubt is what you've got to fight. Because if we doubt, we're like a wave in and out. Yes, no, yes, no, sometimes, yes, no. We've just got to be strong in what we believe and fight the thoughts, fight the words, resist the devil, and he will flee from us. So that's the truth. So we resist these thoughts, we resist these things, we fight them until we win. And I haven't won every battle, even like today. But I will resist reports which are away from God's giving me, because he desires me to be in health and to prosper as my soul prospers. Our soul prospers when we know what he's done for us. Yeah, that's right. Jesus in action in the New Testament. There's a lot of Old Testament scriptures. I was going to talk about those regarding healing and there's scriptures, of course, in the New Testament how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth who went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. So that's what he did then. That's what he does now. In actual fact, he's already done it on the cross. I want to finish off by reading. I've got so much there, but I'm not going to go there. Read with me in Luke 13. This will be finishing up on this. Luke 13, I love this story. I love. I love this story. This is wonderful story. I'll read from Luke 13, verse 10. <clears throat> And he was teaching in the, one of the synagogues on the Sabbath and there was a woman there. Hey, what would have happened if the woman wasn't there? She came to church that day. That's the church in the old day. She was there. She was there where Jesus was. Who for 18 years had a sickness caused by a spirit. And she was bent double and could not straighten up at all. And when Jesus saw her, had she not been in his presence, he would not have saw her because he was like you and me, limited by this thing that we walk around in. And he said to her, I love the King James Version, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. He would have said, Woman, you are loosed from your... I don't know how he said it. It doesn't matter. because This is the word of God being pronounced by the living word. And, and then, then he laid his hands upon her. It's a bit good down the street, wouldn't it? They were loose and then they lay hands on them. There are some amazing things happening around the world. Talk to any evangelist and they'll tell you stories that they've heard of what's happened. I remember um, hearing, uh, what's that Aussie bloke from Melbourne? Ben. Ben Fitzgerald. He's, he, ben Fitzgerald, he speaks of uh, being in Paris because he's running some gigantic outreach in, in Europe, 50,000 stadiums full of people, and, and he's just an Aussie bloke. And uh, he was telling how he, he was in Paris, and he, and he was going to a meeting, because he was the preacher, and he was running late, and, uh, and he bumped into someone in a wheelchair, he'd been in a wheelchair for X amount of years, whatever. And so somehow, he said he loves, he loves the French, how they talk with that bubble, and... Uh, <coughs> 
and and something he and he, he prayed for this guy. Been in a wheelchair for I don't know. He probably tells him the story. I can't remember. And the guy gets up and walks around, not born again. Goes into the meeting and gets saved. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. And this is happening everywhere, all the time, by those nutcases called evangelists. And they're wonderful. They're the most wonderful people on earth. I wouldn't have got born again without one. And we ought to do the work of an evangelist, even Timothy. Even people who don't want to. <laughs> Scripture says, preach the word in season and out of season. Ugh! Even when you don't want to. But hey, it's the word that does the work. It's the word that's all powerful. It's the word that's quick. It's the word that's alive. When you speak his word, it's the same as him speaking his word. And here's Jesus, who is the word, saying the word, thou art loose from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands upon her, and immediately she was made erect again. Eighteen years. We see people like don't we? We, go to milk, we see people walking around like, Great evangelist, Jesus. And she was made erect again and began glorifying God. And the synagogue official started hyperventilating. You can't do that. You're a church. <laughs> That's what he said. It's a bit like, free the dolphins, save the whales, abort the children. Those two are accepted by everyone. Me too. Free Willy. That's okay. <laughs> No, I'm with that. I don't, I'm not against that. But hey, I'm against abortion. I've seen little babies. I see those little girls today. Those little girls. Oh, so beautiful. I love little girls. I've got granddaughters. But... They're so wonderful. And the synagogue official was indignant, filled with rage in Mark's account of this because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. Naughty boy. Hey? But that's what religion does. You can't do that. Don't speak in tongues. You can't speak. <laughs> don't do that. Don't heal the sick. Don't raise the dead. Not today. Tomorrow. But tomorrow never comes. How come today's today when tomorrow's today was yesterday, yesterday's day be due? Tomorrow. It just doesn't come, so let's do it now. Andrew will do it today. Matthew will do that. I pray for somebody. Hey, and something will happen. And if nothing happens, something happened, I tell you. Something happened. My word shall not return to me void. It won't. So the word has the power within it to perform itself. Be like, oh, I've got another sermon. Oh, I'd just love to preach that. <clears throat> there, should, there are six days on which this work should be done, and therefore come during them and get healed. And not be not on the Sabbath day. And I, I wrote down here, six days, not seven, six days times eighteen years. Religion had nothing, had done nothing for her in eighteen years. That's um, six days a week, five thousand six hundred and sixteen days. They did nothing for him, but don't do it today. That's what religion does. Religion is. Pff, There's so many religions around at the moment. Global warming religion, terrible. Stupid, idiotic, moronic, untrue. Talk that to a university guy and they just, they are hyperventilated. <laughs> and they come out with all these words, but hey, how come it hadn't warmed for 20 years? Oh, it's not global warming anymore, it's climate change. Just rubbish. Where am I? Oh yeah, come, come and get healed on those. They're blinking hypocrites. Jesus, so what did Jesus say? He said, you hypocrites. you blinking hypocrites. You hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the store and lead him away to water? And this woman, a daughter of Abraham, I'm of the seed of Abraham and his blessing rests on me, whom Satan hath bound, for 18 long years, should she not have been released from this bond on the Sabbath day? Don't you think that? Any day is good for healing. Tomorrow's no good because 
tomorrow today will be today, as today will be yesterday. So tomorrow, I do it tomorrow. I mean, you can do it tomorrow, as long as it's today, tomorrow, when you do it. Is that right? Make sense? Doesn't have to. I love that story. The woman came where Jesus was. She could have stayed home because she's sick. And, you know, we've all been in that place where we've thought that or done that. I'm not here to condemn, I'm just saying that's what, that's what we like. And, uh, but because she came, coming to Jesus, come unto Jesus, come to him, come to him, he's the healer. I am the Lord that healeth thee. That's his father's name. And he's doing the Father's will. He always did that which he saw the Father do and said that which he heard the Father say. John chapter 8, 5 and, five and 8. I mean, uh, yeah, anyway, you know, like, he hasn't changed and he won't. And you haven't got a special disease that's exempt from this thing, this person who wants to heal you. Your disease is not too hard for him. Because, as I quoted before I got this from Bill Johnson, so it's got to be true. Jesus healed all those who came to him, no exceptions. No exceptions. I am the Lord, I change not. Same yesterday, today and forever. So shall we stand? Oh, I want to say right... Right at the start, let it be known today without a shadow of doubt that natural, which is okay, and supernatural healing is God's idea and God wants you.